Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful, 83 degree, degree winter day here in paradise in the collapse of global industrial civilization in the Point Lonesome Swamp deep in the oasis of freedom on this gorgeous postcard perfect 83 degree Wednesday, December 29th, 2021. So guys, I uh, I just did a review of the Netflix documentary, A Plastic Ocean, and I was going to make that uh, my rant for today, but I'm going to hold that off till tomorrow. So tomorrow you can find my, my Doomer review of uh, a plastic ocean but the main the main theme of that was not as much ocean plastic as it was hopium soaked apocalyptimism and i mentioned this at the close of uh, that ramp but i'm going to go ahead and make this my uh, my chronicle of the collapse uh, for, for Wednesday, and I want to thank alert uh, listener Hide and Sleep. Hide and Sleep, uh, <laughs> a very good uh, moniker for the 21st century, uh, for sending me this. And, and, and I have, uh, I think I've actually, I might have read one of these essays from this fellow in the past, and I'm going to put the little, uh, the little, super dog down and this is a fellow named Elliot Jacobson Elliot Jacobson and he has a uh, a climate change blog with the great title of watching the world go by uh, by uh, BYE and so anyway who is Elliot Jacobson? Just so you know who we're dealing with here. Uh, Elliot Jacobson, PhD, is a retired professor of mathematics and computer science, now a full-time volunteer husband and grandfather, know-it-all doomer, born in the year 316 parts per million CO2. <laughs> anyway, th th I really like this guy and uh, I'm glad to be reacquainted with his excellent blog, Watching the World Go By. But he's not just talking about climate uh, in this one. He is talking about hopium apocalyptimism in House Father. I have mentioned this fellow uh, Zeke Housefather, H-A-U-S-F-A-T-H-E-R, uh, a died in the wool apocalyptimist. I have uh, had one or two uh, rants about this fellow Zeke Housefather, uh, who's a, gotten to be a real darling of the mainstream media. He is one of the go-to apocalyptimists that mainstream media, uh, you, you know, whenever they do an article about climate change and they have to find an apocalyptimist and they can't get Michael Mann on the phone, they call Zeke. But anyway, so uh, this is Elliot Jacobson's opinion of Zeke Housefather and any other hopium-soaked apocalyptimist, this is the single, this could be the single most spot-on analysis of hopium-soaked apocalyptimist I have ever read. Take it away, Elliot Jacobson, and talk to us about hopium, apocalyptimism, and housefather. <clears throat> I was in a Twitter discussion with Dr. Zeke Housefather, a well-known climate scientist and IPCC author. Housefather is a top-notch, first-rate guy in 
every manner. He is well-educated, thoughtful in his comments, well-respected by his peers, and a great science communicator. Here was our Twitter exchange in part. So Elliot tweeted, I am thinking that 2022, now that we're, we're gonna have some F-bombs in here, okay? Yes, we are gonna have some F-bombs here. I am thinking that 2022 is going to be the most fucked up year on planet Earth since the year minus 65 million. House fathers reply to Elliot's tweet. Depends on one's definition of fucked up. I would rather be born in 2022 than in any other year in human history, given my odds of surviving childhood, getting access to education, and having a long, fulfilling life. I honestly don't know how many children Zeke has. I wish that Elliot had mentioned that. Okay, now, so that's it for Zeke. And so this is, that was uh, Elliot's segue into this, uh, this rant. <clears throat> there is plenty of data to support the first two quoted facts House Father cited. First, childhood mortality and disease has decreased. Kids worldwide are healthier and getting better health care. And then he has some little chart to, uh, to show that. The second fact House Father claimed is that access to education has improved. While this is a broad statement and corona panic certainly has caused recent issues, you know, in, in uh, children's access to a quality education, <clears throat> the long-term trends support his statement. And then he gives you a link to support that statement. House Father's third claim is that a child being born in 2022 is more likely to lead a long and fulfilling life than at any other point in human history. Certainly, as diseases find treatments and cures, as healthcare improves, and assuming no, you know, quote, real <clears throat> pandemics, and assuming no pandemics, asteroid strikes, or other non-man-made catastrophe decimates humanity, the average human lifespan should continue to increase. It should be noted that the bulk of this increase comes from the decrease in childhood mortality, not from an ever-lengthening expected lifespan for a healthy adult. Likewise, an oil-fueled wealth trickles down, likewise, as oil-fueled wealth trickles down, many formerly impoverished populations are now getting more of the basics to support a decent life. Food, water, sanitation, housing have all greatly improved in many third world nations. While the vast wealth and rampant materialism of first world countries may not have led us to feeling more fulfilled, and while sugar and fat caused diseases may have shortened first world lifespans marginally, that is more than made up for by the improvements in developing countries. So yes, House Father is right. Start to finish, he is right. Except, except all 
of these statements require a world that is human habitable. They need a planet Earth with less carbon dioxide, less methane, and more resources. They require a planet that is not overpopulated with hungry and horny homo, homo sapiens. House Father's claims require the future to be m more or less similar to the past. House Father's vision requires infrastructure that can survive ever greater calamities, supply chains that function to allow production and delivery of necessities, and food growing regions that are not flooded or dust bowls. House Father's statement requires every element of the architecture of civilization that has allowed us to create this moment in history. When 22 is indeed the best year ever for a child to be born. Unfortunately, as I described in this post, and he links you to another one of his posts that I need to get back to, there are at least 40 reasons why the future will be nothing like the past. And then if you go on this post, you can go uh, read 40 reasons why the future will be nothing like the past and a bunch of other, uh, all his, you know, all his uh, posts on this excellent website. There are two words that best describe the disconnect between the incredible successes of humanity's past and the catastrophic reality of humanity's future. These terms are defined in many places on the internet. I am going to quote the definitions from the Universal Map of Doom by Gail Zawacki, which he links you over to. And I have interviewed Gail Zawacki and have visited her. Gail was talking about coming here and visiting me this winter. I don't know if Gail's still planning a visit. Uh, but anyway, he links you over to Gail Zawacki's website. If you are not familiar with the work of Gail Zawacki, uh, particularly the Universal Map of Doom. Okay. The first word is apocaloptimist, which is defined as follows, you know, by Gail Zawacki. Apocaloptimist, a person or organization that makes a powerful case that Armageddon is nigh, but posts unsubstantiated unsubstantiated hope that human ingenuity will solve the problems in time. That is Gail Zawacki's uh, definition of an apocaloptimist. Back to Elliot. House Fowler is an apocaloptimist. He is brilliant enough to clearly see where humanity is headed and has documented some of the facts of our apocalyptic trajectory in his own research and writing. But as implied by his tweet, he also strongly believes that the climate saving processes and social movements already in place will be sufficient so that a child born today will live a long and fulfilling life. The second word is hopium, which is defined as follows, you know, by Gail Zawacki. Take it away, Gail. Hopium, arguably coined by Lone Wolf back in 2000 on the Survival Acres Forum. Uh, 
hopium is desig is that deranged condition in which a person is deluded into thinking humanity will survive omnicide. Thank you, Gail. Hopium is that deranged condition in which a person is deluded into thinking humanity will survive omnicide. This is an oncoming airboat. Anybody not understanding where humanity is headed simply needs to listen to the airboat. Back to Elliot. Housefather uses the word hopium in his Twitter bio, describing himself as a quote, dangerous hopium peddler, which is exactly what he is. He is a dangerous hopium peddler. Anyway, Housefather's use of quotes indicates he is including the words of someone who previously called him that. I agree that this assessment of Housefather's hopium is spot on. Thank you. That is exactly uh, what he is, a dangerous hopium peddler. Having hopium is having a deranged condition in which a person has a certain type of delusion. Housefather's, Housefather's view about long and fulfilling lives is pure hopium. Human civilization will not survive the massive destruction of life on planet Earth that is already well underway. We get it. Human civilization will not survive the massive destruction of life on planet Earth that is already underway. The sixth great extinction is not a joke to be mocked in the Twitter bio of a climate scientist, even if by self-deprecating humor, even if quoting someone else. The collapse of this planet is a tragic truth. I am so sad about humanity's collective future and the suffering that is to come. It is heartbreaking. Losing everything means losing everything. We are on the same side. You know, he and Zeke House father are on the same side. We see the same facts. However, the future and the past have become disconnected. The current stability, wealth, and health of humans all over the planet has been created by centuries of innovation and scientific discovery. And in the last 200 years, humanity's success has also been driven by extracting material wealth from fossil fuels while choking our planet with poisonous gases. Global industrial civilization is coming to an end, and with it, our long and fulfilling lives. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. Elliot Jacobson. Uh, if I ever uh, get back to the Collapse Chronicles interviews, Elliot Jacobson is, is going to be the first on my list. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting of thinking of a much more limited, uh, much more limited 
uh, interview um, series on Collapse Chronicles, the Hopium Apocaloptimism Free interview, like, like Gail Zawacki, she was one of the few. Uh, Elliot Jacobson, uh, the grandfather. Elliot is a breeder. Gail Zawacki is a breeder. Uh, but anyway, there are a few people who get it. The collapse of this planet is a tragic truth. Global industrial civilization is coming to an end and of course as Book Hermit will point out the sooner the better every single day that uh, global industrial civilization continues uh, this planet goes further and further down the toilet and the tragedy of the truth for anybody uh, with the cojones to face the truth with a capital T knows this. But anyway, now that I have finished chronicling the tragic truth of the collapse of this planet and cheering on the long overdue collapse of global industrial civilization. I'm going to get out here on this spectacularly gorgeous 83 degree day here in paradise. Uh, would you look at this and uh, I guess we're heading to 87 degrees New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. 87 degrees in the Oasis of Freedom, which of course is 20 degrees warmer than the 67 degrees in, uh, in Kodiak, Alaska a few days ago. So uh, I need to go call Gail Zawacki and find out what happened to her trip to the Oasis of Freedom. Get out there and enjoy whatever oasis of freedom you can still enjoy while you still can. Bye guys.